Which is better, the Samsung Galaxy A42 5G or the Samsung Galaxy A41? Well, in this video, we're going to be comparing these two devices to see which one better suits your needs. Now, the Samsung Galaxy A42 5G was literally just launched about a month ago, and the Samsung Galaxy A41, which is the predecessor to this phone, has been out for about a year now. So I figured it'd be very interesting to see what advancements have been made from the predecessor to the successor. Now that being said, I feel like for a certain segment of the consumer population out there, the A41 still is a good choice. But as we break down the differences between these two devices, definitely think about whether or not you need the various improvements with the A42 5G. Now as far as pricing and availability goes, it is different by country, and I will be updating the link in the video description so that you can see the most up-to-date pricing for both of these phones. I'd imagine that as time goes on, prices will go down for both of them, so definitely take a look and see. Now here are the boxes that both devices come in. A pretty similar presentation here, of course, we have pictures of the actual phones themselves and then the names of the devices. Another thing that I want to point out as well is that the A42 5G, if you hadn't guessed it already, does support 5G, whereas the A41 is LTE only. Also, I believe that there's never going to be a regular A42 and all A42s are going to be the A42 5G. Now the most obvious difference between the Samsung Galaxy A42 5G and the Samsung Galaxy A41 is that the A42 5G does have a larger display. In fact, the display with the A42 5G is 6.6 .6 inches compared to 6.1 inches with the A41. And you can see side by side here with both phones, without a doubt, the A42 5G both has a larger display and a larger form factor in general. Another interesting thing too is that the bottom bezel on the A42 5G is thicker and larger compared to the A41. Now not by a whole lot, but it is at least noticeable. Now with both of these devices, we are getting Super AMOLED displays. So you're going to get good viewing angles, bright colors, and crispy images in general. However, the biggest difference is that with the A42 5G, the display is 720p, whereas with the A41, we are getting 1080p. So in that sense, that's a downgrade going from this phone to this phone. However, the good news is that when you look at the displays very closely, both do still look nice. I mean, it is a little bit obvious that the A42 5G is 720p, especially when you are comparing it side by side with the A41, but it's not like this display looks really good and then this display is terrible, it's just that this display is a bit better. Now if you are watching a lot of videos on these devices, keep in mind that especially for certain apps like YouTube, you are limited at 720p since the display here is only 720p, but you are going to be able to watch full 1080p videos on the A41. Now as far as the PPI goes, there is a difference as well as you'd imagine. With the A42 5G, we have a PPI of 266, and with the A41, we have a PPI of 431. Now with both devices, we do have a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, and with the A42 5G, we have an 84.3% screen to body ratio compared to an 85.9% screen to body ratio with the A41. So it is slightly better with the A41. Now up top here, both devices do have water drop notches for the front facing cameras. That is something that I was hoping that the A42 5G would ditch, especially since in my opinion, the water drop notch is really something that was more relevant in 2019. But now that we're moving into 2021, I was really hoping that pretty much every phone would ditch the water drop notch but we do unfortunately still have that here with the A42 5G. Now with the A42 5G, we have a 20 megapixel front facing camera, which is definitely impressive, but with the A41, the front facing camera is actually 25 megapixels, so it is a bit better. Now one major difference is the internal storage. So with this variant of the Samsung Galaxy A42 5G, we're getting 128 gigabytes of storage, and with this variant of the Samsung Galaxy A41, we're getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage. So with this phone, we are getting half the amount of internal storage compared to the A42 5G. However, both devices do feature microSD card expansion, so if you do want to add more storage to them, then at least you have the ability to do that. However, I'm certainly a big fan of having the most amount of internal storage as possible, so in that regard, I'm glad that we're getting so much here with the A42 5G. Now as far as device security goes, both phones do feature in-display fingerprint sensors, so we'll give those a try right now, starting with the A42 5G. So you can see, 
Nice and fast there. We'll give it a try with the A41 as well. And also quick, maybe a little bit quicker though with the A42 5G. Now both phones do feature face unlock as well. So you do have a variety of different options when it comes to accessing the devices. Now, neither of these two phones feature wireless charging, which does make sense, especially considering that no A-series phones even have wireless charging. So if you do want that feature, then you are gonna have to go for something a bit more premium. Now on the backside of these devices, we have some similarities, but also some differences when it comes to the camera modules. So with the Samsung Galaxy A42 5G, we do have a quad camera setup and kind of a newer form factor compared to other A-series phones from Samsung. So we have a 48 megapixel main camera, we have an eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a five megapixel depth sensing camera, and we have a five megapixel macro camera. And we are getting portrait mode with both the rear and front cameras on this phone. And then with the A41, we're getting a 48 megapixel main camera, an eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a five megapixel depth sensing camera. So this is a triple camera setup compared to a quad camera setup with the A42 5G, but really the only feature that you're gaining here with the A42 5G is having that macro camera. And I know for many people out there, that feature isn't really that important. And we're getting portrait mode with both the rear and front cameras on the A41 as well. Now here's how things look through the main camera on both phones. Then from here, we can switch over to the ultra wide angle cameras and fit a lot more content into the frame. Now it does seem like though with the A42 5G, the ultra wide camera is a little bit wider, but in general, not too many differences here. Then from there, we can go to the more tab on the A42 5G to access the live focus portrait mode. So we'll do that right now. And then we do have it right here to the left of the photo button on the A41. So by doing that, we do get these nice blurred out backgrounds, which I know that everybody is a big fan of, at least typically. And then again, with the A42 5G, we do have the macro camera, so we can get very close up for nice detailed images. Let's now flip over to the front cameras on both phones. And you can see here's how things look. With both devices, we do have the ability to switch to a little bit of a wider front facing view, which is good for group selfies especially. And then we can go over to live focus on both phones as well for the front facing camera. And again, get those nice blurred out backgrounds here. Now it does seem like in at least this situation, looking through the viewfinder, we do have a little bit more color with the A42 5G. Now, as far as which phone takes the better photos in general, I would say that there's not really a huge difference, but from my experience, the A42 5G does do a bit of a better job. I don't really think that in itself is a reason to get the A42 5G over the A41, because in general, you are gonna be getting nice cameras that give you good results with both. However, one big difference to think about is that with the Samsung Galaxy A42 5G, we do have 4K video support with the rear camera at up to 30 FPS, Whereas with the A41, both the front and rear cameras do max out at 1080p. Now, one of the biggest differences between these two devices is the RAM and processor. Now with the A42 5G, this is the six gigabyte of RAM variant, and we're getting the Qualcomm Snapdragon 750 5G processor. Now that is a newer processor from Qualcomm, and obviously, hence the name of the phone and the name of the processor, does support 5G. So you have to think about whether or not that's important to you, at least at this point. And then with the Samsung Galaxy A41, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM, so a bit less RAM, and we're getting the MediaTek Helio P65 processor. Now the P65 is actually a pretty decent processor, and in general, I've had good performance with the A41. But as you'll see in a second when I show you the benchmark scores, we've gotten a very significant performance boost going from the A41 to the A42 5G. I'm not sure if I've ever seen such a large jump in benchmark scores from a predecessor to a successor, but you can see here with the Galaxy A41, we got a single core score of 349 and a multi-core score of 1236. And then with the A42 5G, wow, look at that, so much better. We got a single core score of 658 and a multi-core score of 2009. So almost double in both categories here. And really when it comes to actual usage of the two devices, I mean, like I said, the A41 is not a slow phone, but the A42 5G is really significantly faster. So it almost seems like, I mean, there are certainly several things that have been upgrades 
from this phone to this phone, but really the biggest upgrade of anything is much better performance. So I definitely appreciate that. Another big difference between these two devices is the battery capacity. So with the Galaxy A41, we get a 3,500 milliamp hour internal battery, and it does support 15 watt fast charging, just like the A42 5G. However, the battery with the A42 5G is 5,000 milliamp hours. So we're getting an extra 1,500 milliamp hours of battery capacity going from this phone to this phone. Now I'm sure part of the reason why we are getting a much higher amount of battery capacity is due to this phone having a larger size in general. So there is more space for a bigger battery, but that is a very large jump in general. And I definitely would expect to get better battery life with the A42 5G compared to the A41. In fact, this is kind of interesting. I've had this phone pretty much on now for the whole duration of me recording this video. And you can see that I'm still at 100%. Now with the A41, the phone was not at 100% when I started the video. Video anyway, so I'm not really sure how much it's gone down by, but the point is is that this phone hasn't even gone down by a single percentage, despite me having the phone up and running with the screen on 100% brightness for at least 15 minutes. But now that we've compared the major specifications of these two devices, let's take a closer look at the hardware. So I already talked quite a bit about the front panels on both phones. Pretty similar here, I mean we do have that thicker bottom bezel with the A42 5G, but in general both phones do have that water drop notch up top and both do look pretty similar in general. Also, materials are pretty much the same as well. They do look a little bit different, but they are the same. Now taking a look at the left side of both devices, they both have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. Then. On the right side of both phones, they have the power button, volume up, and volume down. Then on the top of the two devices, they both have the noise canceling microphone. Then on the bottom of the two phones, they have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, USB-C port for charging and data transfer, microphone, and speaker. And then on the back of the two phones, also pretty similar, they both have the camera module and they have the flash, and that's pretty much it. Now the pattern is a little bit different on the A42 5G compared to the A41. I personally actually think the A41 is the better looking phone of the two, at least from the back, but in general, they are pretty similar. And especially after you put a case on either one of these two phones, they're gonna look almost the same. Let's now do a speed test comparison between these two phones. We're gonna start by pulling up the camera apps on both. So one, two, three, go. And it looks like the A42 5G was the faster phone of the two at pulling up the camera app. Let's now go to Google Chrome on both phones. One, two, three, go. And it looks like the A42 5G was the first phone of the two to get to Google Chrome. Let's now go to yahoo.com. One, two, three, go. And the A42 5G was the faster phone of the two to pull up Yahoo. Let's now go to engadget.com on both phones. One, two, three, go. And Engadget was first to pull up here on the A42 5G, but it wasn't really too far behind on the A41. Now scrolling with both phones is smooth, does seem a bit smoother on the A42 5G. Well, not really. I mean, it's very smooth as well on the A41. So really both phones do a good job when it comes to pulling up different things and browsing the web. Let's go to this article next. One, two, three, go. And again, in this web page right here, the A42 5G was the first to pull it up. So I would say in general, the A42 5G is the faster phone of the two, but still at the same time though, the A41 is not a slow phone by any means. So in conclusion, which of these two phones is the better choice of the two? And is the A42 5G a decent upgrade over the A41. Now, I would say that there's certainly quite a few things with the A42 5G that I think could have been better than they are. However, I understand that they wanted to really pack in the value, especially with giving us a good processor for a good price. So definitely when it comes to switching from four gigs of RAM and the Helio P65 to six gigs of RAM and the Snapdragon 750G with the A42 5G, that's a pretty significant performance increase there. And it really seems like they went all in on that. You know, they gave us a bigger battery, they gave us more storage and better performance, but at the expense of having a 720p display. So I would say that in general, the A42 5G is a decent upgrade compared to the A41, but definitely let me know what you think. I'm really curious to know about your thoughts. Are you happy that they gave us a much better processor here with the A42 5G, but at the compromise of giving us a 720p display? I definitely want to know. 
But this is Samsung Galaxy A42 5G versus Samsung Galaxy A41. I hope you enjoyed the video and take care.